So Latin America sh reflects now a good opportunity for investment. Uh, tax uh, codes are being adapted to make it a little bit more attractive to invest capital gains in Mexico don't exist for a tax that uh, do not exist. There is no double taxation. There are a lot of things that are positive in terms of investing. Probably I would say that Latin America is today the least bad of the areas of the world to invest. And that doesn't sound very encouraging, but with interest rates at 1% or half a percent, with the U.S. government or the Fed announcing that for the next three years rates are not going to move up. Latin America has had fabulous 10 years. It's been great. The cleaning of the balance sheets has been amazing. Foreign debt by most countries is under control. Debt as a percentage of GDP is as a part of the world at the lowest outside of those four uh, Asian countries we mentioned. But as a full segment of the world, it's at the lowest it's ever been and the lowest in the world. And that has come mostly because of the rise in the value of commodities. Most of the countries in Latin America make most of their revenues from the export of commodities. Call it oil in Mexico, copper in Chile, bauxite in Jamaica, it doesn't matter. Whatever you see, grain in Argentina, the increasing values of those commodities have, I mean, the cost of producing a pound of copper or extracting a bag, barrel of oil is the same whether you are selling it for $40 or $110. I mean, the pound of copper, or the, if you sell it at $250 or at $450, it costs exactly the same to extract. So, the higher the price, the more you profit and the better off the country. Fully loaded wages in China are still about 40% of fully loaded wages in Mexico. The hourly is very similar, but the fully loaded is about 40% of the ones in Mexico. So they still have a major, and they have a different working conditions. You know, they work six days and they work 50 hour weeks, and then they work 20, 28 days and rest two. I mean, labor is still cheaper or uh, less. I would say more exploited in, in China than it is in Mexico. Definitely, Mexico is one of the better places to invest right now. The proximity to the U.S. is a major, major factor. It is a, it's definitely a problem, but corruption in China and Russia, for example, rates high, as high or higher than in Mexico and you are seeing foreign investment there. So it is a deterrent. It's very uncomfortable. There's a, the Lockheed Act of 1977 that forbids American companies to pay for services rendered. Mr. 10% should not exist based on that law. And it definitely is a deterrent for foreign investment, even though they've been savvy enough to play around the game. I think that it's so ingrained in the system, in the corrupt countries, that to expect that to go away is very hard to make. But it, it, it has to be one of your considerations when you decide where to go. Violence in Mexico is mostly fighting among the drug trades. I mean, there have been some unfortunate casualties in tourism, but you can count them with one hand, probably. It's not a matter of, a, no matter how hard you try in terms of public relations, when you have the media of the other countries fighting you, you're going to lose that battle. And it seems as though there's a decision here to paint Mexico badly. Now there was a State Department warning about 18 states in Mexico that are dangerous. And I think that if Detroit was a state in Mexico, it would be number one. I mean, more dangerous <laughs> to go to Detroit than anywhere in Mexico. I think
think that the only thing you can do is teach by example. I mean, keep on going, invite people, invite them to a game in Mexico, invite them to see the Cholos, and <laughs> hopefully they're going to realize that they go there, they have a good time, they can go to great restaurants, better than the restaurants here, and next time they might go on their own. <laughs>